Now, depending on whether you're a new man or an old man, you can interpret that a lot of ways. But the reality and the truth is, and we must be about truth, is that there is some truism to this. Now, we cannot expect the world, and when I talk about the world, I mean what the Bible talks about in Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2. This world system that's opposed to God. 2 Corinthians 4 would say that the little G God, Satan, for a temporary amount of time is being allowed by God, big G God, to have his sway in the day of man. But as you learn Sunday from Dr. McFarland, the day of God is coming sooner than what you think. And there will be no real true justice in it until the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords sits on the throne of David and rules with an iron rod. Until then, his reps, his bride, the body of Christ must reflect what that future rulership that everybody will see looks like during the day of man. And if we fail, and if we are failing, there is no other institution given by God during this time that the world can look at and get a proper illustration from God. Christian scholarship has rarely acknowledged that people of color have significant roles in both scripture and early church. Thank you, my brother, for not your head. I can't get in the way, man. <laughs> Over the centuries, primarily white historians have whitewashed Christian history, making it seem like faith found in the perpetuated by white Europeans. This has led many black people, as well as other people groups and ethnic groups, to question whether they have any place in American Christianity and the church. This has pushed me to seek belonging to heretic identity groups outside of the church. You see, this issue is important for those of us who minister in urban and inner city contexts because it is one of the messages that heretic groups and heresy groups are using to draw people out of the African American church into their heretical cults. Right. And while my Caucasian brothers and sisters may not have to fight this battle in your suburban neighborhoods, it is a battle we have to fight regularly. Yes, sir. You're right. I went to Carver Baptist Bible College Institute Seminary, Apples of Gold, and all the other stuff they do, which was predominantly led by African-American men and women. There were Caucasian men and women, but my master's degree and doctorate program was done in a primarily Caucasian institution. And there was not one class that I took, and I took a lot of where this issue was ever addressed. You're right. That's right. And I'm going to show you later on in the notes, in case we don't get to all of it. The problem for me, the concern for me, and the concern that should be for all of us, is that the Bible is God's story, not man. God, from Genesis to Revelation, has laid out his story of redemption, and no one has the right to edit God. Come on, come, come close. If we do not communicate the Bible as it is written, 
truly reflecting the characters that God chooses to point out in the Bible. Yes. And if the Bible says they're African or Asian or Latino, and then all of our art and our movies says they're European, somebody in it God. But don't y'all amen too quick. Because the pendulum is way over here and we want to swing it way back over here. And so we come up with our African Bibles, our Latino Bibles. And my concern is, who said we had the right to rewrite God's story? While this is historically true, the solution is not to go to the other extreme, as I've already said. Reflecting unity by means of the gospel, which this conference is all about, requires reflecting biblical truth even on this issue. I have never been to a conference that has dealt with this issue. I've been to a lot of conferences. I've spoken at a lot of conferences. I've taken a lot of Bible college classes. I've taught a lot of classes. This issue is never dealt with. <laughs> but we're going to deal with it today. All right. Now, if you are a reader, I can't cover all of it. You can get this book where I got a lot of material and some other material that I put together. It's called The Whitewashing Christianity. He goes much deeper, much more in depth, and we'll have time to, to go into. It's right by Jerome Gay Jr. I, I recommend it that you read it. Now, you may not agree with everything. But I think there's enough there to get our minds percolating to have some discussions. The church and Christian institution refusing to address this subject has helped to perpetuate the white Jesus and black Jesus myths and to portray the Christian faith as one largely influenced by European people and culture. Listen, in our church and in many churches, we have stained glass windows. And the stained glass have different colors. <clears throat> On a cloudy day, you don't see the diversity of the colors well. But when the SU wind shines bright, through the stained glass windows, all of the colors are clearly seen, but what they all have in common is the light that's coming from the SU wind. Brothers and sisters, the S-O-E is the light of the world. And he can shine through all of the different stained club, class variations of ethnic diversity and class. And while the diversity and the color of the light, once the light shines through, the commonality is the S-O-E. And that's where we start. But we want to talk about the different colors that are shining on the carpet of the people. No proof right now. Throne day quotes, when thousands of black and brown people are turning away from the faith in part to do to the perpetuation of a white Jesus, we must ask you why. When an entire faith is misrepresented, we must ask why. When whitewashing eclipses the core message of the gospel, we must examine why white Jesus or black Jesus is the only Jesus most people know. We must ask why. Whitewashing has and is tainting the Christian faith. Quote, unquote. So let's define the term whitewashing, because it may not be familiar to you, it didn't used to be familiar to me, but I've done the research, I've studied this for a year, a couple of years. The Cambridge Dictionary defines whitewashing as an attempt to stop people from finding out the facts about a subject or a situation. That's what it is in its purest definition. It is an attempt to hide facts in order to control a narrative. I told y'all, we don't need CRT, you just need a Bible. An example of whitewashing is the use of white people to represent people of color in film and history. 
One of the examples that he uses in the book is the movie by Cecil B. DeMille's The Ten Commandments. Y'all remember that movie? Yeah. Tell me what color were all the people in the movie? If you study your Bible, the Egyptians were dark skinned. And the Egyptians were persecuting the Israelites who were dark skinned. It's not your story. 
It's his story. Yes. History is God's story. Yes. We play a part. We're characters in, in, in the show, in the history, but it's really not about us. That's right. But we have made it about us. But this is not new. In Romans chapter 3 and 4, the Jews had what I would call Jewish supremacy. Remember, the Jews thought if you were a Jew, you were trash. Right. Less than human. Dogs, the Samaritans. Because they would say, we have Jewish privileges. The Messiah is a Jew. He came through the line of Abraham. We have the covenant of Abraham. We are the chosen people. We are the chosen nation. God chose us, the Israel, and made us a little nobody into a nation, and the people called by his name. We have the law, we have the Bible, we have the Ten Commandments. We have all this. We are superior to everyone. And Paul comes to Psalm 1 and says, Hold your horses. You know what you you can have all that, but if you don't have the faith of Abraham, you just as lost as the people I just described in chapter two and chapter one. Yeah, right. For all have sin. Yeah. <laughs> now God like that. God like that verse. <laughs> oh, you know, all and all that. All have sin. I come short. Of the glory of God. But let me quote it how you mean it. We use that to say all are sinning and we're falling short of that. what the text says. See, you don't even need any Greek for this. ED is past tense, ING is present tense. All have sinned. So the question is, what is the sin past him that he's talking about? Right. All are under Adam. Right. And all are guilty of that sin. And that sin and that identification would be enough to send you to hell if you never committed a sin in your life. That's, right. That's why you must transfer headship from the first Adam chapter 5 to the second Adam. Because everybody under the first Adam, Jew, Gentile, Greek, Barbarian, Scythian, male, female, slave, and free, will bust head a lot of them. All under the second head, the second Adam, Jesus Christ, shall be saved. So stop using that text to keep on sin. That's not what that text is talking about. Many so-called Bible-believing evangelical seminaries have a long history of discrimination against African Americans. And to this day, when teaching church history, some of these schools ignore the church in Ethiopia, Egypt, India, Persia, and other nations of color, acting as if they did not exist. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. Yeah. You don't have to go to these black cults to find us. <laughs> we in the Bible. We're there. Yeah. We're a part of the story. Yeah. Yeah. When you go read Acts chapter 2 and you see all the languages that were spoken, check out the regions they came from. Yeah. 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 See, we, 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 we have Europeanized and Europeanized the Bible so much. When we read that, we read that with European American eyes. And you miss the fact that while they were Jews, they weren't all the same shape. Wait a minute, Pastor. You're saying there was some dark Jews. I'm saying the Bible says there was some dark Jews. Say Just like there were some dark Gentiles, some light Gentiles, some medium Gentiles. The church at Antioch, in Acts, 
had a diverse leadership staff. There were some Africans, Ethiopians on that staff. There was an Italian on the staff. Paul and Barnabas were on that staff. It was a diverse leadership. Because God's story is a multi-ethnic story. Yes, sir. To change it and make it a one particular group story is to edit God's story. Yeah. And no one, no one has been given the authority to rewrite the story. Yeah. It was written perfect the first time. Don't need no rewrites. But it's more than that. True biblical Christianity is not a white man's religion. It's not the black man's religion. It's not any man's religion. It is God's way of salvation for all mankind. It is God's work, period. For it is to be presented as a religion of any, it's not to be presented as a religion of any single race. For it to be whitewashed is idolatry. Oh. Any idolatry is in the house. Mm -hmm. To have pictures of a white Jesus, black Jesus, Asian Jesus, Latino Jesus hanging on your wall is idolatry. Because oh, nobody knows what he looked like. And I believe by the divine wisdom of God, it was done that way on purpose. But we like lookalikes. We can't really identify unless he looks like we got somebody that looks like us. But you have no right to edit this story. Dr. Tony Evans explains that elevating anything, identity, race, or national allegiance above Christianity is idolatry. And whenever the national allegiance causes you to have a non-Christian perspective underneath the flag, then what you have done is you've created a national ideal that God must resist, reject, and judge, and that's why we're in the shape and the boat we're in now. That's right. Because of the growing sentiment among people of African descent as well as around the world and here in America that Christianity is a Western-centered, European influence, white owned expression of faith, this is biblically and historically inaccurate. Now how are we supposed to be the household of truth telling lies? How are we supposed to be the pillar and support of the truth telling lies? Telling an edited version of God's story. No wonder people are not acting right in church. Mm. Yeah, that's right. We've been lying. Yep. Yep. For far too long. Mm -hmm. The gospel is rooted historically biblically in Africa, in the Middle East, and Asia, long before the Western shores. I'm saying, you see, you gotta go back before the founding of America. Christianity didn't show up when America came into existence. By the way, oh, here we go. <laughs> in my Bible, we should be like your Bible. Yep, yep, yep. God only claims two nations Israel, mm -hmm. and according to 1 Peter chapter 2, the church is a nation. But we done bogarted America into the family. <laughs> God comes two nations. Now it's nice that we were built on biblical principles. And we may or may not have started out that way. But we are long away from that now. Do you know why you've never met them? They don't exist anymore. 
So what makes us think that America will always be around where God says, I raise up nations and I take out nations. I raise up kings and I take out kings. Well, Y'all say, yeah, but you ain't thinking theologically when you go into that booth to vote. I'm here to tell you, if God is the one who raises up kings and takes out kings, nobody gets elected unless God allows them. So to complain, to complain against the person who's in the office, we can deal with the issue, we can deal with the subject, but when you talk about him like a dog, and God says, I raise up kings, I take out kings. I have allowed them in for my sovereign purposes that you may not even understand. So who are we really complaining against? You better hush your mouth. A nation that has excluded God from everything deserves a right to him.
To lie about God's story is a satanic scheme and attack. So stop dealing with the shadows and start boxing with the problem. It's a satanic design attack. Every lie is. Yeah. Every falsehood is a satanic design attack. But we won't go and deal with the devil. We want to deal with his minions. Spiritual warfare is taking place in heavenly places. Ephesians chapter 6, starting with verse 10 says. We wrestle not against Because you, you can't give it just on two 
Psalms on Sunday and maybe Wednesday. Okay. Listen, Jesus was the best teacher ever. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. amen. Jesus was the most anointed teacher ever. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. Jesus had no imperfections to pass on to anybody. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. amen. And it took him three and a half years every day with the disciples to get them right before he left. <laughs> and you think you can do it two hours on Sunday morning? Who have made a business 
of keeping the troubles, the wrongs, and the harshness of the Negro race before the public. Yeah, all right. Mm. Mm. Now, y'all like Booker T, but y'all don't know this Booker T. <laughs> Having learned that they are able to make a living out of their troubles, they have grown into the subtle habit of advertising their wrongs and partly because they want to want sympathy and partly because it pays. That's those men we talked about in chapter 2 this morning who seek to deceive and defraud and cheat people because they make money yeah. off of keeping this hatred and bitterness and anger and historical history lesson going. Yeah, that's right. Come on. Yeah, that's right. Any pastor in here worth his salt knows that if you do marital counseling and you get a husband and wife in the office and you tell them all I want you to do is talk about all the wrongs that he has done was wrong with him, and I want you to talk about all the wrongs she has done that was wrong with her. That counseling is going nowhere. But then when we want to talk about the ethnic and racial issue, we want to talk about all the stuff that was done wrong. You're not going to solve anything talking about how bad they have done and how wrong they have done. That's real. Please, I'm not undermining. But we, the people of God, have a different agenda. <laughs> Second Corinthians 10 says, The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are spiritual, for pulling down strongholds and armaments that oppose God. We don't use what the world uses. That's right. Amen. Our weapons are powerful. Can get to the root of the issue. So we're not always trying to treat symptoms. But you gotta believe that the word of God is the word of God that is possible and sharpening into a sword for them. You gotta believe 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is inspired by God and is profitable. For everything the man of God needs and makes it thoroughly occur. You gotta believe. Or you'll turn to human philosophy and human traditions and asceticism and legalism and liberalism and not the word of God. Thirdly, whitewashing is destructive. Consider the slave owners painted the Bible white in order to justify inhumane child slavery. They did that. Yes, they did. And yes, some of them claim to be Christians. But saying it don't make it so. If you don't love your brother, your fellow man, like God loves your fellow man, saying it don't make it so. So stop saying that Christians did all this and say that people who said they were Christians, but by their action didn't demonstrate they were Christians, so they may not have been Christians, so we don't mock Christianity. Because my Bible says the new man is not like the old man. The lists don't even look the same about what the new life produces. And when it shows up, they put it to death. Fallacies like the curse of hand. How you read your Bible to get him and say can? All right. Unless you have a purposeful agenda for misinterpreting death. And the very people who were looking down based on the curse of Ham, if they did some of that blood work where people are tracing their ancestry, <laughs> they fall out of heart. Because they got some ham up in them too. <laughs> some ham, some David, and some Shem, and some Noah, and some other stuff. Aristotle, Aristotle's climate theory, you can look that up. It's in the book. But see, Satan and his cohorts, his workers of iniquity, have come up with all kinds of If this God is only using one group of people, it's dangerous. Dangerous! 
It leaves people of color with questions about the role they play in God's plan. If you did the research on some of these cultic groups, Hebrew Israelites and Kismetics and Muslims and Islam, most of those people who make up their groups used to be ex-Baptist church members. That's right. Yeah. Why are we 
was so upset, and CRT is trying to get to this, by the fact that our educational systems do not teach history, and you ain't even taught it in your own house. <laughs> Last time I read my Bible, it said, you, Mr. and Mrs., train up a child in the way it should go and when he is old. You won't even turn off the TV and teach this stuff to your kids. But you mad at the educational system because they ain't doing it. You get it. There used to be a time when mamas and daddy taught their own kids. When they sat down and helped them to reason through the things that they were learning in education. And we just turned our kids over to Caesar and said, go Caesar, go. Because we too busy. There used to be a time when daddy played catch with his kids and taught his kids how to throw and catch a ball. Now we hire everything out to special. And you think you're supposed to bring them to church in the past. It's supposed to do your no job. Oops. Mad at everybody or something we should be mad at ourselves. That's right. These men were men who had African blood running through their veins. And the story of theologian Thomas C. Odin so boldly stated in the book how Africa shaped the Christian mind. Despite this adversity, there is a unified center for Christian teaching, the primitive African baptismal confession, which is a time gain ecumenical confirmation. Brothers and sisters, we have a history as African American people and African people that is in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Yeah. Solution for whitewashing very quick, quickly. Confession. We got to confess. Listen, I'm not asking my Caucasian brothers to go back and confess all the sins of their forefathers. You just got to admit it's been messed up. And if you've confessed that to God and you've repented of that, we cool. You can't go around confessing every black person. That's right. That's right. And there's no word about us that we're supposed to. In spite of the CRT cities. But we do need to admit in the church to our fellow brothers and sisters. That was wrong. Yes. Yes. The whitewashing of Christianity is wrong. Wrong. Amen. See, where are the Pauls who confront the people? That's right. Don't be calling me as a hitman to your church confront your people. <laughs> you confront them. <laughs> now I'll do it. But Paul confronted Peter when he saw that his behavior didn't match up with his profession. Because what was at stake? The gospel. To my Caucasian brothers, you need to go confront your other Caucasian brothers. Right. You're not being straightforward about the truth of the message of the gospel. I'll stand right beside you and say amen and turn the pages. All right. There needs to be repentance on both sides, on all sides. Then we need to return to the truth of the book. Yeah. Revelation says, confess, repent, and start to do what's right. And then we'll see this thing change. We'll see it change. We need reteaching. We need to go and fix our curriculum. Yeah. We need to go and fix our movies. Or you need to show the movies that that's not correct. That, that person was of African descent, or Asian descent, or Italian descent. We need some reteaching. You need to 
have classes on blacks in the Bible. Hallelujah. And don't stop with blacks in the Bible. Get some Asians in the Bible, and some Italians in the Bible, and some Latinos in the Bible. Yeah. So that your people will not be controlled by the false narrative. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Pastor, how are we going to do that? They won't come back. Start with the ones who come back. Amen. Talk about black or people of color in church history. Help them to discern the misconceptions in the art and the movies and educational material. Show the Ten Commandments and say, hey, 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 hey. Moses' wife was an African woman. Yeah. Yvonne Carla was dark. She ain't dark enough. <laughs> Develop cross-ethnic and cross-cultural partnerships. Intentionally on purpose. Yes, sir. Yes. See, Satan keeps a lot of this false narrative going because we won't have honest dialogue. That's right. That's right. And let me say something to my Caucasian brothers and sisters in the room. Be careful what African American people you talk to. Because some of them just angry. And all they want to do is give you a piece of their mind. Which they can't afford to lose because they don't have much. <laughs> Find someone of a common born again spirit. Yeah. 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 And sit down and have some conversations about how you see this and, and why is it that this perspective and, and have some dialogue with an open Bible in front of you. Yeah. Stop having conversations about your opinions. Let's have conversations based on the Bible. Those of you who are here from educational institutions, you need to have a class on blacks and white. Yes, sir. That's right. But we don't have anybody on our staff that can teach it. I got some people that can teach it for you. <laughs> See, that's one of the benefits of our association. Yeah. We can help with those kind of things. Yeah. Right. Start having multi-ethnic conversations. Go to coffee, go to dinner, go to lunch, go to brunch. Get out in front of the television. And sit down and have some conversations. Yes. Mark DeMoss, who is one of the fathers and pioneers of multi-ethnic churches in America, has a great book. If you don't know where to start, he's got a book called Multi-Ethnic Conversations. He got all the conversations started for you. It's on the list of what type of but I believe this is an important issue that has gone unaddressed for far too long. Yeah. And people are being snatched out of the church by these demonic cults yeah. Yeah. on a lot. Mm -hmm. Because they can see themselves in the Bible because they're in the redemptive story. Yeah. And we got to make a change. We got to make a change. Because there is no plan B. There's only plan A. The body of Christ. Father, we just thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you for this privilege. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.